This video is powered by As Always Entertainment. If you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com forward slash as always for access to the Patreon exclusive podcast, The Kill Connor Clubhouse, early access to the Cinema Room podcast, being a part of polls for future videos, and other early access material. With that said, please enjoy the video. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to this video podcast with myself and co host James. Welcome. As always. As always. Hello. Um,. This isn't a Kill Connor Club, Clubhouse, Cinema Room, anything. This is just podcast conversation. We did one yeah. that will be out by now, the MCU Phase 4 mm-hmm. and 5 conversation. Uh, this is just about my trip. Is this going to be a time on my show? Uh, I don't know. Nah, I'll just... Mm, nah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, let's say it is. Let's say, Nah, I don't know. It's something. It's just a video okay, don't, podcast. Don't panic. It's okay. Ah! You asked me too many questions. Um... <laughs> And this is going to be all about my trip to America. I want mm-hmm. to tell you the stories, um, what happened, uh, shit that went down, and also tell all of you that happened. I, I'm obviously in the United Kingdom right now, in yeah. Northampton, but uh, I spent yeah. mm, 10 days, 9, 10 days in the United States of America, my first time to America. Mm-hmm. And I kept track of every day um, what I did there on my phone. So I got phone notes. I'm going to be looking at my phone notes, by the way. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I've got all those notes for like what I did each day while I was there. Perfect. So that's I could go few, through... There's a few notes. Yeah, so, so I didn't forget anything, like yeah. even just a little yeah. thing. Just so you know, there's more than two. There is more than two notes. Yeah. That's true. There's At more, least. There's more than two notes. Um, but it's my first time in the US. You, you've been to the US before. I have been to the US. Um, it, was, it was awesome overall. Like it was mm-hmm. honestly life-changing. Um, some places more than others. Um, sure. But it was an amazing experience. I, I loved it. One of the best times of my life, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, New York. Yeah. Incredible city. Loved it there. Um, but I just went to LA for a few days and then New York for a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why was that? Why did you go for New York? N- go to New York for longer? Like, when you booked it? Because it was really only supposed to be New York. So, like, what happened was... I right. planned to come over to the UK for a couple of weeks. Mm. And then I wanted to have an extra week for myself to go somewhere. I'd planned, since I'm in the UK, I'll go back to Italy, mm-hmm. do spend spend a week in Italy. And yeah. you know, I go to Florence and the Amalfi Coast and stuff and just hang out. Mm-hmm. Then one of my best mates from high school, David, um, who if anyone's watched my channel for long enough, he's been on my channel, did my Assassin's Creed 1, getting all the achievement series. Yeah, that yeah. was him. Um, and he's an actor, he's been... A musician, he's been touring all around the world the last couple of years, and um, our favorite artist is John Mayer. He bought two chi- two tickets to John Mayer at Madison Square Garden and said, "Dude, mm-hmm. come with me. Let's see John Mayer at MSG." I'm like, "Holy shit! Okay, uh, I guess." So I changed it so I'll come to the US first and then go straight to the UK from there. Yeah. Um, so that was just New York. He just planned a week in New York, and I said, "I'm not coming to fly to New York. I have to go to LAX." Mm-hmm. I'm not stopping in LA and not going to the comedy store and not seeing yeah. LA. This place I thought was probably, when I imagine moving overseas in the industry and things I want to do, LA is probably where I got to go. So I was like, if I'm there, I better check it out. Yeah. So that's why I just did a couple of days in LA when really I wanted to spend my time with my mate and New York. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Obviously, right. um, was the point of the trip. Uh, and in terms of a holiday, I'd rather be in New York. To be fair, LA was more just to. I really wanted to see. I'm like, is it a place I could live in one day? Yeah. Um, and yeah. So on like a, I flew out on like a Saturday morning at 11 a.m. from Brisbane, mm-hmm. and then landed on the same day at 7:30 in the morning. Yeah. So for the time difference, like That's so, so I, and it's a 13 hour flight. Long ass fucking flight. Um, but I had slept a couple of hours and it's so long that. It's enough time that you can be disoriented enough that your body doesn't mm-hmm. really even know what time it's supposed to be anymore. Yeah, yeah. So when you land and at 7 a.m., I go, yeah, that's cool. Mm. I slept on the plane, it was dark, now it's the morning. Yeah. Rather than knowing that there's been weird time mm. differences. It's weird, though, that you, you left at 11 and then you landed and it's like four hours uh, before. before. On the same yeah. day, after 13 hours weird. passed, yeah. yeah. Um, and nights happened. So, mm. like, I... I lived that day and entered the night of that day that was coming and came back yeah, out of that morning. day in the morning of the day before. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, so it's hard. To, don't even think about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, I landed in LA and 
just as soon as I, I got in there, uh, first of all, I've heard a lot of stories about American airport security. Mm-hmm. TSA. Yeah. Bunch of assholes. Mm-hmm. Stressful. Airport security stresses me out. Especially international yeah. travel stresses me out. Mm-hmm. Thinking, fuck, I'm not America. It's going to be fucked. Yeah. It's going to be assholes. It's going to be shit. Mm-hmm. Could not have been easier. Really? Actually, the only place it was easier was entering your country. Where yeah. I talked, okay. literally talked to nobody <laughs> and got in your country. I didn't talk to anyone. I did not yeah. talk. I walked in a line, put my passport in a machine. It let me in. And then I, and then it's like, if are you claiming something or not claiming something? I'm like, I'm not, claim, I'm not claiming anything. Brought yeah. in nothing. But even if mm-hmm. I was, I could just go to not claiming anything. There was no one there to There's stop you. There's never anybody, no. And then it's you just empty. fucking walk into yeah. the country. It's really easy. And I was like, I didn't talk to anyone. And yeah. I was like, that it's was... It's a bit of a problem, actually. It is. Th- that's a it's problem. It's a problem. That's a problem. I, just, I consider that a problem. If you're coming... So if you're like a dangerous person and you're coming from America, it's yeah. not going to be so easy because American security is so tough that you're probably not going to get on that plane. Yeah, right. But if you're coming from somewhere... Oh, they don't care in America they, if you're leaving. They don't care at all. They care it was, a bit, It's pretty like, easy to leave the country. America, it was easy to leave America than get in America. But it was easy, sure. but to be fair, easy both times. But also, yeah. to be fair, not... Don't have, like, white Australian male, young, not unattractive. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I look well put together. I dress well when I travel. Yeah, just a normal person. I look yeah. like a normal person. Mm. I'm switched on. You know, say hello to people when, you know, mm-hmm. you, they're talking to you. I don't act suspicious because I've got nothing to be suspicious for. Yeah. So I get that they're not going, we better randomly check that guy. Yeah. You know? So it, to be fair, it is easy for me. Mm-hmm. Like 100%. But it was definitely easy to leave. Like they don't care if you're leaving. Yeah. 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 But when you're going into the UK, there's never anybody in the airports. There's no people anywhere. You just sort of wander through. When I was at Heathrow last time, and I was just stopping over. I didn't get mm-hmm. out. There was fucking soldiers with machine guns. Oh yeah, they're about sometimes. Not when you're entering, apparently. They just sort of they just sort of wander around. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, but if you're coming from somewhere like I don't know. I suppose the thing is though, maybe they'd be a bit harsher on you if you weren't white. Well, yeah. Also, there's two lines to go into in in the UK. You have to talk to someone if you're not from this list of countries. Mm-hmm. From the UK, if you're a UK citizen slash have a UK passport, or America, New Zealand, Australia, mm-hmm. and like Canada, and there's like two others. Yeah. You go on the same line as UK passport holders. You mm-hmm. don't have to talk to anyone. Yeah. And if you're from those countries, you're allowed to enter and visit on a visitor's visa for up to six months in the UK. I didn't apply for a visa to get here. Mm-hmm. I just could come for six months because I came. Yeah. I bought a ticket. I'm yeah, allowed yeah. to come because I'm Australian. So also, to be fair... Everyone else had to talk to someone. Yeah. You're from like certain European countries. You're from Africa, the Middle East, Asia, anywhere, yeah. South America. You have to talk, get stamped, explain why you have a visa. Yeah. I didn't have to have a visa to come here. It's because you're white. <laughs> it's because I'm from Australia. There's no yeah, white why. Australians, man. Um, yeah, true. If it was a woman, she would Aust- have to be. Yeah, yeah, you're right. She'd Australia better... is a safe country. We, you know, you'd pretty think. Safe. Yeah, pretty safe. If someone's an Australian citizen, they're probably fine. Same with the US and, you know, yeah, probably, generally. Probably. But also, if someone's, you know, from, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a place, Romania, they're probably all right. No, probably not. <laughs> Check them. Probably coming to kill everybody. Strip search them. <laughs> Finger up the bum. No. Um, yeah, but it just, it, security wasn't that bad in America when I arrived. Like, mm-hmm. it was also early in the morning on a Saturday, so it wasn't busy in LA. Mm-hmm. And, like, I just expect everyone to be really rude. But, honestly, the thing that people don't understand is, and especially, like, most people in the world that haven't been to Australia won't know, to get into Australia is ten times harder yeah. than getting into America. Yeah. I think way That's harder cool. than getting into the UK. What I didn't realise was, like, okay, first of all, Australian security is the hardest. Yeah. And that's why security stresses me out. Yeah. And I thought America gets... You hear the stories, but more people travel to America and live in America yeah. than Australia. Mm-hmm. So people don't realise that... Try coming to Australia... It's fucking hard. It's yeah. way hard. I'm an Australian citizen, and there's ten more steps to get into this country yeah. than there is if you're um, an American citizen. Yeah. Like, I arrived in America, and all I had to do was 
go down through customs, you go to a kiosk that you put your passport in and you answer questions like, are you declaring? Because mm-hmm. I've been to countries, I went to Italy, they give you a paper slip yeah. and you have to write, no, I don't have this, no, I don't have that, no, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. You just do it on a computer. Yeah. And then it prints out like your passport receipt. Mm-hmm. You hand that receipt to a guy yeah. who checks your passport, checks your receipt, goes, how long are you here for? Three days in LA, five days in New York, or whatever it was, or five nights, five nights in New York. Yeah. Cool. Stamp. Yeah. There you go. That's easy. When I got my bag. Cool. Got my bag. And yeah. as I was walking out with my bag, there's a guy standing there, and I hand him that receipt. Yeah. That was it. That's easy. It took ten minutes, and I was like, yeah. "Oh!" And they were all really nice. Mm. Like the guy was super friendly. It's like, yeah. "Wow, okay, that's it." Yeah. Go to Australia. As an Australian citizen, mm-hmm. sure, I get to go into... There's a line separate for Australian and New Zealand passport holders. Mm-hmm. And then there's a second line for like English, US, countries like that. Yeah. And then there's everyone else. Yeah. So there's like the ally one, Australia, New Zealand, same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you walk in, you you know, you have to put your passport in. You have to do all the declarations. Um, then they check you. Then you get your bag. And then with your bag, you don't just get to leave. Mm-hmm. They... In, like they'll stop you and go even if you're not declaring anything I'm like I have yeah. nothing to declare mm-hmm. they're like you. they still will ask you and like talk to you and like read your thing and look at you and stuff like yeah. that and they might say can we check your bag mm-hmm. yeah. and there's way more security everywhere there's security ev- there's more there's, why? Australia has like such a strict immigration policy yeah. way stricter than here way stricter than America well we don't have a strict immigration um, policy at all like yeah we have the super super strict immigration policy but also you gotta understand like the big thing with our immigration especially border security and de- mm-hmm. declaring stuff is our wildlife uh, we have yeah, the, yeah. one of the most unique wildlife um, environments on earth so mm. we can't let people bring in fruits seeds animals shit like mm-hmm. we are so like fucking skits about it that's why Johnny Depp like got kicked out of the country when they were filming Pirates of the Caribbean oh, really? he brought his two dogs and didn't declare them oh. we're like, and we're like well we're gonna euthanize your two dogs <laughs> don't fucking bring your dogs here Jesus Christ. and not declare them imagine or, euthanizing but, Johnny but Depp's just, dogs but it's just like hey Johnny just declare them like yeah, but he thought he didn't ha- he's like I'm Johnny Depp that was his uh, thing. he's like I'm okay. Johnny Depp I don't have to declare classic Johnny Depp and then he did an apology video and it looked like it was like at gunpoint <laughs> like, it looked like it was a gunpoint. I was like, bro, you, you can't just come in with yeah. your shit. We have a very sensitive um, ecosystem here Yeah. with, like, crops. But, mm. like, so, we, you know, there's states you can't travel f- with fruit with. Just so states strange. between. Like, we're, like, because... It's, that's yeah, crazy. They're, they're crazy on it, man. Like, um... That's the main thing. It's not, it's not just about like, oh, we can't let this person in sort of thing. Mm. And we are very strict and that's stricter than the US. Yeah, yeah. But our main strictness comes from declaring stuff. Yeah. Especially when we're next to Asian countries, right? So someone will go yeah. to Asia, they'll buy this wooden carved statue or something. Yeah. But in it, it came from this tree and it's got inside it, it's not been, it's just been made by some dude in a village. Yeah. It's not mass produced where it's been chemically yeah. disinfected like in so they'll break it open and be like look at this fucking insect in there or mm. this bug or these seeds I'm like you can't have this, and this yeah and they'll destroy it wow like so shit like that like so things that's why they're so strict on like people declaring stuff because it's stuff people don't realise mm. that they've gone and bought it's a souvenir it's like you can't have that you can't bring that wow. in that's crazy yeah they're so strict that's really fucking crazy thank god I- I mean, yeah, it's Thank good. God. It's, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, and you understand, we have like boat people problems in Australia. Like, what does that mean? You know, when people come over illegally, like refugees and oh yeah, yeah, and stuff, asylum seekers, mm-hmm. cunts, um, cunts. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just you know cross the border in European countries. They'll just you know fucking walk across, get in a train, whatever. Mm-hmm. In Australia, they come on boats from the Middle East, right? Or well, right. lots of other countries, but like even like they can come on boats. So they get in a mm-hmm. boat, travel days. Mm-hmm. through terrible terrain I'm telling you right now not landing they won't land because we though. our border security is like we have people always yeah. on the the coast and they will catch every fucking boat mm-hmm. and everyone gets arrested yeah is there a controversy about that yeah well, and, people, and people I'll tell you what happy. our our um, bo- um, border camps are worse than the US's <laughs> You don't hear fucking about that on national news, no, on international no, news. No. Yeah, I mean, it is a controversy in Australia. It's a big, big yeah. debate. People don't like the environments they kept in, but like, we're not, you know, 
called Hitler. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Donald Trump is, right? Like it's a bit, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a difference. Like when America does it, it's like the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, well, when like we do Trump's it, doing, when yeah. we do it, we're like, even though like no one wants to have to put anyone in those places. It's awful. They're yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, like Christmas on, like it's awful. I, I hate it, but you can't come in. Yeah. You don't live here. Yeah. You're not from here. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do when you come in? You've just come from a war-torn country about that has a completely different culture ideals and that you're used to this way of life. You can't live that way here. Yeah. And they're like, no, we'll live by your laws. But you won't. <laughs> like, because <laughs> you'd never do. Yeah. And I don't blame you for it. You don't know any better. Like, mm. you were raised in a certain way. You came to an environment from an awful place. And I yeah. get it. But we can't just then, oh, come on in. We'll pay for you to live here. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Mm. And this is not really... Not exactly at all relevant. About no. my trip to America. Talking about immigration, but yeah. Immigration, border security. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm an expert on it, so no big deal. Um, but I got to LA, and when I arrived, like... Yeah, I, straight away, I was like, this is a weird place. Yeah. California, LA, weird place. Like, mm-hmm. just from getting in the first Uber... Also, LA drained all of my money. Yeah. I spent more money in three days in LA than a week in New York. Jesus Christ. Just Ubering around. Everything's so spread out. Mm -hmm. Your public transport sucks so much. So you have to Uber. And Ubers are so expensive. And the Australian dollar conversion at the moment is so shit. So I was like, it cost me just so much more money than it usually would. Oh, God. Um, And food was really expensive too. Fuck. Mm. LA costs a lot of money. And I... Just in the Uber ride, driving down the highways... And I'm watching just like crazy fucking homeless people. Yeah. And like there's homeless people in Australia, obviously, mm-hmm. in the major cities. I've lived in Melbourne and Brisbane. I see homeless all the time. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But like California, LA homeless, new level. <laughs> different different kind of people. Different kind of homeless. What kind of shit did you see? Well, I saw tent villages, but I've seen things like that. Maybe not to the size of one of them I saw was massive. Okay. But like just, they were just fucking going off and it was just like they just felt comfortable to be on the streets with everyone else yeah walking around yelling that's so weird and I was like hey what a weird environment don't don't <laughs> don't don't um, but my check into my Airbnb wasn't until 4 o'clock so I had a luggage mm-hmm. and a backpack right and it's 7 in the morning jeez what did you do well I, I go to the host of the Airbnb and I say can I drop my bag off in the living room or something mm-hmm. so, so I can not have to carry it everywhere. Yeah. Because then I'm just going to go to a Starbucks and sit there for 12 hours until I can check in or whatever it was. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, that's fine. So I dropped it off and but I was so exhausted and I got there, it was air conned, no one's there, I'm qu- it was quiet. So I'm back and I'm like, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. Like, even yeah. though I'm not checking in until four o'clock, by that time it was like nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just went to Santa Monica for the day mm-hmm. and didn't buy sunscreen, got so sunburned. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to Santa Monica and like checked that out, went to a you know, Starbucks Mm-hmm. Your coffee's not as bad as everyone says. Not great, but not as bad as everyone tells me. Okay. Um, then do people, do people say Starbucks is bad? No, American coffee is bad. Oh, oh, but American coffee is awful. But yeah, I also come like from a coffee connoisseur. But I come from Australia, which is the best coffee in the world. Yeah. Okay. So sense. that's that's the difference. Thanks, thanks Italians for bringing that um, <laughs> over. Um, yeah. Well, Melbourne's like the coffee capital mm. of the world. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest of the country, you know, kind of just takes it from Melbourne and like yeah. Yeah, alcohol. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like I went to an Australian cafe when I was in New York, and like they finally had like I'm like this is coffee. Yeah. Now, this is what a coffee. Did. Yeah. It was fucking delicious. But um, but I also just I drink black coffee anyway, so I just got iced americanos, which is just like a okay. cold brew straight black coffee on ice. Okay. And because it's summer, uh, uh, you know, in the northern hemisphere. Um, I just had, yeah, I didn't need hot coffee. So I was just yeah. like, yeah, iced Americanos, easy, nice. Um, and free Wi Fi at Starbucks. That was helpful because, like, it costs so much money for yeah. international roaming yeah. and stuff. That's good. Um, but anyway, yeah, get to Santa Monica, kind of just walked around the pier and stuff. And for, like, I'm there for two hours into my time in LA, mm-hmm. and I walked to the end of Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. People everywhere. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And I hear music go, Doo. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is exercise music or something. And I hear a lady's mm-hmm. voice over like a speaker. All right, now change your position to the downward dog. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's yoga going on here. And then I go in and there's all these people spread on yoga mats so close to each other in yeah. public. 
and they all have dogs. And it turns out this is a dog yoga session. And like it had a picture of a dog and then it had for their for their Oh yeah. For their soul, for their core, for their bark. And I'm like That's not even a good play on words. I don't know, I'm probably not exactly right, but it was something like that shit. Okay. It was that shit, but like I'm sure I got it wrong. Um Oh god. What were the dogs doing? They're just sitting there? Their owner doing yoga with them is just, you know, help. They sometimes have the dog, like, on the chest or something. Why weren't the dogs... Because, of course, they're in L.A. All little dogs. All just, like, people with, like, oh, yeah, fucking tiny princess dogs. So It wasn't, like, a Labrador dog. golden retriever. I think, like, one guy had a, a lab. Okay. Why weren't the dogs going mental, though? Like, all running around and... Because they're zen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they just love the yoga. Because they're zen. Yeah, they just love their fucking um, yoga, I guess. I don't know. It was bizarre. Okay. And I just, and then a lady comes up to me. He's like, "You want to try one of our special energy juices? <laughs> is it Did free? You? Did you want to try? It? Yeah, is it free? I'm parched as fuck right now. Yeah, because like all I had, some dude yelling, "Ask cold water!" Like at the <laughs> pier end. I'm just like, "You're not from here, obviously." Um, one dollar, and I'm like, "No, nah, I'm all set." Um, so I was like, "Is it free?" Yeah, yeah, try it. But it does this. Is it? Oh, I caught it. I left. I took it. Um, yeah. Then, How was it? Tasted like water with some flavouring in it. Okay, that's alright. Felt energised, man. Wonderful. Energised. That's what you want. Then I, yeah, did the walk down to Venice way longer than I thought. LA's mm-hmm. so big. Because it looks like my partner's next to each other. 20 minutes. Yeah. Hour. <laughs> oh, fuck my life. Like, they look so yeah. close. They look like 10 minutes away than that. But we, LA's so massive. So I walked down to Venice Beach. Way more crazy people down there. LA just smelt like hot piss and mm-hmm. marijuana. That was the two distinctive smells. Sounds absolutely lovely. Of LA. Venice Beach full of crazies. Tourists and crazies. Mm-hmm. Just people yelling. To, but it's crazy for me because I just think it's so weird. Everyone's so aggressively in your face. Yeah. Like well, what? Like. Examples? Just like people wanted to like be involved in everything that was going on. Trying to sell you something. Mm-hmm. Talk to you about something. Give you something. Get something from you. Yeah. Everyone everywhere in LA. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, mind your own business. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. get out of my fucking face. Like, yeah. you get any closer, I'm going to slap you. Yeah. Like, it just got uncomfortable at times. Yeah. And then, yeah, had my first meal finally. I realized I probably should eat. Mm-hmm. Um, just had, like, on Venice Beach, went to a restaurant, had a beer, um, and had a burger. Good burger. And then finally, like, I ended up walking way longer, bought some sunscreen, too late, way too burnt. Um, yeah. And then that night I went to the comedy store after, so I checked in, had a nap, got to the comedy store, which is why I went to LA. It's why I went there. And I um, mm-hmm. saw Joey Diaz, yeah, Theo Vaughn, Tony mm-hmm. Hinchcliffe, three of my favorite comics of all time, I got to see him. So I arrived late. Okay, this, this is my bone to pick with the comedy store Okay. in general. Now, to be fair, it's not really my bone to pick, but okay. I've never been anywhere where you bought a ticket. To be fair, comedy store tickets for a couple of hours, ten dollars for Joey Diaz's show, and you saw eight comics perform. That's good. Late show, twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Fifteen comics. Great value for money. Best comics. Yeah, on earth. yeah. But I didn't know this. Until I got there. Two drink minimum. So what that means is you mm-hmm. give them your card to have a tab. You have mm-hmm. to, and you have to buy two drinks. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'll get two beers. Mm-hmm. Peroni. I got Peroni, Italian beer. Not big. They're just a regular sized glass beer bottle. Yeah. Nine dollars for that beer. Wow. Nine dollars is what I would pay in Australian dollars for that beer. Yeah. Maybe for a Peroni, nine dollars. Mm. So that's a fourteen dollar beer. For me. Expensive That's beer. a 14 Australian dollar beer. Double it, because i got to buy two. Yeah. 28 Australian dollars. Now i got to tip you 20%. Wow. Because Americans tip. Yeah. I don't tip. Don't don't tip you. <laughs> so I'm paying $30 Australian for two mm. beers. Small beers. Wow. That's a lot of money. If I pay $30, I, want, I expect two, two or three pints at a bar. You yeah. know what I mean? Two or three mm-hmm. pints of beer, not small, little fucking beers. Yeah. First of all, and I had to mm-hmm. do that twice because I went to two shows. 
that, oh, that right. night. Like I went yeah. to the early show, walked out, waited 20 minutes in the line to just go straight back in and then I had to buy another two beers there. <laughs> so I spent 60 Australian dollars for the two shows actually. Oh, okay. Plus the $20 ticket, $10 ticket, you convert that to, to Australian dollars, $45. So I spent over $100 on the night. Yeah. To be fair, I'm in LA for the comedy store. It's not really that yeah, much. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's the experience. There's no complaints, but I'm just saying it's fucking weird. Yeah. And I, if I'm paying that much money, I want more than four Peronis. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's fair. That's, That's all I'm saying. Fair. I agree. Fucking expensive alcohol. But I met in line some uh, two guys that um, were going to that late show and they'd been to the early one. Eric, who I added him on, I got him on Instagram now, and his friend Enrique. Okay. Definitely white. <laughs> Um, and they were really cool dudes. So they were, they were just chatting to me, asking me like when they heard my accent, they're like, Holy shit, you're from Australia. Um, you're from England. No. Um, you chatted to them. Then like, they were really super people like, to be fair, like lots of people in LA were super nice. Like either mm. half the people were crazy or the other half were just super, super nice. Yeah. So they were just super nice. <clears throat> and they're like, Oh, come sit with us um, in the show. Sat with them. And, um, I got a picture with Joey Diaz after the first early show. Yeah. I walked out the hallway and I was just like filming the wall. I'm like, I'm in the back of the comedy store, you know, like as you're exiting. And mm-hmm. then Joey's there. I'm like, holy shit, it's fucking Joey Diaz. Got a picture of him, shook his hand. And, you know, I was like, oh, dude, I came from Australia. Like, it was just awesome. Such mm-hmm. a good guy. But everyone's yeah. getting pictures, didn't get a chance to like talk to him. Mm-hmm. Then Theo Vom is like the third comic up uh, for the Late Show. One of my favorite comics in the world. Listen to all his podcasts. Mm-hmm. Saw him in Brisbane a month ago when yeah. he toured. Did a sort of show there. And I thought, I'm gonna get a fucking picture with Theo. That was my like. I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to meet Theo. So I, as soon as he finished his set, and he's like, "Oh, thanks, guys. It's still on stage. Introducing the next comic." I went to go for a piss at the back, and yeah. I had a piss. Came back out as I was walking down. He was caught in the hallway by someone that was working at the comedy store, mm-hmm. and I just go, "Oh, hey, Theo. Nice set, man." And I left it like that. Yeah. And then he goes, because he was talking to someone, and then he stops and he goes, "Oh, thanks, man. Like, came shaking my hand." And I, and then I introduced myself and had like a bit of a chat to Theo. Yeah. I was like, "Holy shit." Because I go, oh, man, I saw you in Australia like a month ago. You were awesome. You killed it. And he goes, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Like, I would have done different jokes. Like, I'm like, fuck, are you serious, bro? But yeah, had a good bit of a chat to him. Got a picture with him. He was just the nicest fucking guy. I loved Theo. And then even when I left the comedy store, he was waiting out the front. Also, I saw him leave. Like, when I was getting my Uber, I saw him leave with a fucking smoke shop girl. (laughs) I was like, good on you, Theo. Um... But, like, as I was leaving, he caught my eye, and he goes, hey, man, nice to meet you. Bro hugged him. I was like, holy shit, fuck, you're the man, Theo. And then I saw as well, after Tony Hinchcliffe, I did the same thing. Went back and said, great set, introduced myself. Because, again, I've seen... Joey Diaz is the only one I hadn't seen. I'd seen Tony Hinchcliffe live in Australia before when he opened for Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. And his time, I'm like, dude, when you're in Melbourne, you're open for Joe, you just fucking murdered. He did. He fucking killed everyone there. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, But he probably had my longest chat to him, and he was, like, asking my name, what I was doing and shit, and, like... He was cool as fuck. And then I saw his podcast on the Monday, Kill yeah. Tony. He does a live show. That was amazing. Like, one of the best nights of my life, honestly, meeting those guys. Like, such a special night. I, I follow all these comics. I watch all their podcasts. Joey's, Ro- from Rogan's, Tony Hinchcliffe's, Theo Vaughn's, Shobbs, Callan. Every one of those LA comics I just follow and support. So to be where they, every day on every podcast, they talk about, yeah, last night on the comedy store, this, this or that. Mm-hmm. Like, it was so special to, to have been there. And seen yeah. all of that stuff. Like, it was it was crazy. Yeah, that's and, great. And to have met uh, the three that were there that I knew. They were the only mm. three there that I really knew yeah. um, well. Uh, and then I got to see them perform at the comedy store in their home. And Joey, especially, because he can't travel internationally. Yeah. He's a felon amid to jail. Um, so, you can't see him anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Unless you're in America. So, um, yeah, it was one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. Special night. And I was like, wow, crazy. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I got home and slept, like, 14 hours that night, man, because yeah. fucking, yeah, what a day. Um, but, yeah, LA was awesome most of the time. in and out yeah. was pretty good. Burgers, solid burgers. Chips suck dick. Yeah. Too many people also. Okay. Way too many people. Mm-hmm. Like, New York, there was just as many, right? But, like, yeah. felt more, made more sense. Yeah. Because there was so many buildings and places to go and do, right? Like, there's things everywhere. Yeah, yeah. LA, it felt like there was nothing really there where you were. Yeah. You were there for one thing. Mm-hmm. And so was everybody else was there for that thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, too many people. Mm-hmm. Have more to do. Too many people. Yeah. I went to Universal. Oh, yeah, you did. Hated it. 
Yeah. Hated it. Cost 183 Australian dollars for a day pass. Okay. Uh, to Universal. In which there were 70 trillion people there. And it was on Monday. Yeah. Summer holidays, obviously. But, like, I thought Monday might be right. Um, so hot. I go on a Harry Potter line. I went to Harry Potter World, looked around. There was Ollivander's, like, one shot. Mm-hmm. Half an hour away to get in. Yeah. I just went in the back door. Yeah. Do you know why I went in the back door? <laughs> don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. Yeah. Don't respect your wizard bullshit. <laughs> don't respect your gay wizard rules. So I'm just going to walk in. Because gay what, wizard rules. Yeah, gay wizard rules. Don't respect it. I'm walking in. Okay. I walked in. They saw me walk in. Didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm here now. That's good. That's helpful. And then I walked in, went through the shop, and I was like, mm, this is, who cares? Yeah. Um, and then left. But I was like, mm, okay. whatever. You know, because I want to check okay. it out. I'm not waiting half mm-hmm. an hour. Just going to walk in. Don't respect your gay wizard shit. <laughs> Every other one I respect, but Ollivander's one shot. Yeah. Suck my balls. <laughs> Suck my balls. Karma paid me back straight away, but... Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. Because I see uh, Hogwarts, and I'm yeah. like, oh, you can go in Hogwarts. I wonder what's in there. Didn't read any signs, just walked in. And they go, oh, no, the line's that way. I'm like, oh, cool. Couldn't see any line. Yeah. Line goes into, like, the Forbidden Forest, mm-hmm. or what the fuck ever. And then, because every kind of, it curves, you know, the line's curving like this, and you're going away from Hogwarts before you eventually come back. Yeah. It's just every line's coming, but there's trees between everyone, so you can't see mm-hmm. where the line ends, how far the line goes. Yeah. More lines. <laughs> Go through more lines. Oh, more lines. Turn around the corner. More li- Oh, more. Uh. More. More. I'm only still getting further away from Hogwarts. Yeah. I'm in line. I don't even know what I'm in line for, James. Oh, I followed all of this on Twitter while you were tweeting. I was live tweeting. Because I just was like, I don't know what I'm in line for. I also don't know how long the line is. Mm. When does it end? <laughs> Never. And you're just in the sun. Like, you're just standing in the sun. Oh, it's like outside. It's outside. Okay. In the sun. Hey, Jeez. 20 billion people here paying $1,000 a pop. Have a shade. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Have a shade. God. Because the line in the Forbidden Forest, in the sun, was two hours. My God. And an hour in, and when I realised what I'd done, I go... Been here too long to leave. I'm too stubborn. I'm not leaving. Mm-hmm. Too long to ask anyone what this is. Yeah. I'm just committed. Yeah. Even there for an hour, and you're like, "Hey, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why am I here? What's this? What's this? What am I even lining up for?" And they get to the end of the line, get into Hogwarts. Yeah. Still another hour of lines. Oh my god. Three hours I lined up for whatever this was. Granted, when you're inside, you're in aircon. Yeah. This kind of Harry Potter shit around. Yeah. yeah. You can kind of, if you're a fan, you're probably like immersed in because you're going through different classrooms yeah you see um I was about to say Trump study fucking Dumbledore Trump <laughs> Dumbledore study same thing you know what I mean like, yeah, oh, whatever okay. whatever bro I don't care I <laughs> uh, don't respect your wizard shit <laughs> um Dumbledore study then you go into a classroom and they've got like the actors that like on projectors like mm-hmm. telling you a story through. so I'm like granted that the paintings talking to you and shit yeah. If you're a Harry Potter fan, this is your shit. This last mm. hour of lining up is like a part of the experience, so it's not as bad. Mm. Um, but to me, I'm like, fucking animal. And I haven't eaten yet. I've been in this yeah. two hours, haven't eaten. Yeah. I'd had like a Starbucks and water. Yeah. I was like, I need food so badly. Yeah. Um, then I get to the end of the line, and it's one of these like... Um, projector screen experience things where you mm-hmm. sit and like they harness you into this like mm-hmm. thing you're supposed to be on some sort of broomstick or flying thing yeah and you're like getting thrown around and there's a screen you've got like harry and stuff and they're mm-hmm. all playing like on broomsticks and you're flying around hogwarts and there's a fucking dragon and shit and like yeah, yeah, yeah. i just like but you're just doing this <laughs> and i was like i got a fucking headache so i felt like i was gonna throw up afterwards it was, yeah. it was five minutes mm-hmm. of that <laughs> five minutes of that of me trying uh, honestly trying not to throw up that's incredible. And then I get off and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine you having lined up for three hours and you're on this thing and you're like, oh, this is fucking dreadful. <laughs> I, I, what have I done? I fucking hated it. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I fucking hated it. Oh. Um, but, um, yeah, lined up. And uh, then, you know, just... Um, yeah, felt sick afterwards. I was like, I need to get some food. 
I have mm. here some food. So I leave the fucking Harry Potter world, Bush Harry Potter world, because they're like, oh, you want a butter beer? Suck my Australian <laughs> balls. Suck my big Australian balls. I need to get out of here. I don't want to... Yep. I hate Harry Potter. I went yeah. from not caring to hating it after okay. that. And I felt sick. So I'm going to get some food, haven't eaten. That's part of the reason I felt sick, plus this shit ride I waited three hours yeah. in the sun for. So there's Springfield, The Simpsons. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. my town. Mm. My boys. Krusty Burger. I'll go on a Krusty Burger. Yeah. 30 minute wait. <laughs> to order. Of to order. 30 minute line. That's insane. In that line, like, I was like this on the bench. And you, wait, you waited in line? Yeah, because everywhere was lines. Yeah. Everywhere was lines for whatever you wanted. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this is what I'm getting. So I got to wait in line. I waited 30 minutes in the fucking line. Started in the sun. Yeah. And I just thought I was going to throw up because I got nothing in my stomach. <laughs> what a fucking disaster. And I've paid $180 for this day pass. Mm-hmm. Plus, I'm paying, you're paying for the food. So expensive there, too. Yeah. Like, it was $20 for like a burger meal and a drink. That's a lot. US. Yeah. Like, mm, what the yeah. fuck are we talking about? That's crazy. So, I'm spending so much, all my money, I don't have a lot of money for this trip. Mm. I'm spending all of it doing shit that's making me miserable. <laughs> And then there's no seats anywhere, of course. Like, you get your food and there's yeah. everywhere, there's nowhere. So I sat on, like, a stool bench mm-hmm. that's this big. My tray was sitting out of it. I'm like, well, how is, who made this fucking shit? Yeah. <laughs> who made this? And then, burger was okay. It was fine. Yeah. Got some food in me. And then I sat there for, like, half an hour because I'm like, I need to let the food digest because I feel sick. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Okay. What am I going to do now? I need to... This day sucks. The day's almost half over. Because I, I didn't get there till like 11 yeah. in the morning because I thought, I'm not going to get there when it opens. I'm going to get there in the middle of the day. It'll be the busiest then. But I'm staying until like 7 because I am going to the comedy store that night at 8 for an 8 o'clock show. And I didn't want to mm-hmm. catch an Uber back for $50 Yeah. back to where I was staying in, in Brentwood near Santa Monica. And then another $30 to get back to the comedy store. I'll just get Uber back to the comedy store and then back. Like, I didn't want to spend all this money. I'd already yeah. spent so much money on Ubers. Stay there till seven. And I Uber pulled it to Universal because it would have been $60. Otherwise. Okay. Uh, it cost me half that just because like, it took twice as long because they're like mm. stopping picking other people up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so, I end up going down to the Jurassic World ride. It's just opened this Jurassic World ride. Mm-hmm. Four hour wait. Did you wait? So the, n- fuck no, <laughs> no. The the sign the, and the sign said four hours because I went out to the front of that Harry Potter line and I saw how big the line was. I know it's three hours. It says two hours. No, it's not okay. three hours. So what I know is the signs are lies. Yeah. I now know that. So yeah. when I see four hours on the Jurassic World mm-hmm. ride, what I know that actually says is six hours. It's a so six long. Six hour wait. Why would anyone stand in a line for four hours? Not only why would they, if there's a line in your park that's four hours yeah too many people in your park (laughs) it's ridiculous let less people in you've got to have a capacity you think so yeah to have the park everywhere's full the shortest wait was 75 minutes that's still long for a walking dead walk through so I did that you did that and I loved it because it was air conned ah line was in air con good and it was only 75 minute wait and then you walk through it was five minutes long people like zombies coming out screaming at you and I was just walking through enjoying the air con it's great that's great then I went to this Harry Potter coaster that was I timed it mm-hmm. 75 seconds 75 seconds hour and a half wait wow and I was like oh cool I'm just trying to that's... get on everything I can get on to say I went on shit at this yeah. point not enjoying it at all <laughs> roller coaster sucked first of all it wasn't even yeah. a fun roller coaster and mm. it was 75 seconds Jesus um yeah, yeah. Um, then I did the Kung Fu Panda experience. Wow. It's like what you watch that? a five minute 4D Kung Fu Panda movie, and what that means by 4D is your chair kind of moves a little. Yeah. And they spray water at you. That's incredible. 60 minute wait. What? Who is going on this? <laughs> who, who wanted to go on it so badly? And. What is going on? And I don't even like Kung Fu Panda. And I didn't like you that. You don't love Kung Fu Panda? No, no, I don't. It's fine. Never seen it. It's okay. Don't know what it is. It's like Jack Jack Black plays a panda. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. I'm pretty wow. sure Jack Black didn't voice the panda in this thing. Though. No. No. Um, so it was whatever. I was like, okay, yeah, I've done another thing. 
You I've done another Kung thing. Fu Panda because it, I'm experience. only doing this out of spite at this point. I don't care what ride <laughs> I get on. I paid this much money. I'm going on everything I can physically get on in this time. That's in yeah. my mindset. I'm like, I'm not mm-hmm. enjoying myself. I'm just out of spite going to get on everything. So I, yeah. the last thing I did was I go, I'm going to do the Universal Studios tour. Mm-hmm. Says an hour wait. Mm-hmm. The wait was 15 minutes. Ah. And the That's tour right. is an hour. Wow. You go and see so much shit. They, you see sets. They take you into these like, VR experience things and you wear 3D glass for them mm-hmm. there's a Fast and Furious one lame King Kong one pretty cool yeah. and then you they like unleash water sets on you so mm-hmm. like they'll take you to a set and show you like where they unleash like water shit um, a set where there was an earthquake so yeah. in a subway so everything collapses a truck comes out flames start coming out electricity going everywhere the water subways floods with water and actually floods mm-hmm. with water That's cool. fucking cool <laughs> You see the Jaws set, you see the Psycho set, you see mm-hmm. um, um, heaps mm-hmm. for an hour. Oh, yeah. Fucking awesome. That's great. Made the, and after that, I was like, okay, I don't hate this place. Yeah. That was honestly, that set to a save the day. Because I, I was like, I Thank fucking God. hate this place. And that suit, yeah, it was awesome. It was fucking great. sick. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I would say I don't like Universal, I'll never do it again. But if you go there, you just have to do the Universal Tour. Like, that's a must. And it was, and I did plan on doing it, but I was like, that'll be the last thing I do. Thank God it was, because it was the best part of the day. Yeah. Um, and it was long. Like, it was actually like, you get somewhere and it didn't just, you wait in line for seven hours and then it's over. Mm-hmm. It's, you wait in line for an hour and it's an hour long. Yeah. That's fair. But that's it wasn't. Good. It was like 15 minutes and I was on. That's good. Great. Yeah. Good. So successful day, then went to the comedy store that night, had my two minimum beers, um, and then... Flew to New York on the Tuesday, yeah. um, to which I met up with my friend David, and his girl. We, we booked an Airbnb a loft in East Village, nice mm-hmm. area in Manhattan, and I arrive and I check Uber when I get my bag, mm-hmm. eighty dollar US Uber to Manhattan. I'm like, oh, okay. no, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's a bit. I'm, I just like I'm figuring out how subways work here. Mm-hmm. I'm figuring out the subway system. It's this is tough. this is my life now. No, it's and I've. I've caught trains in every city I've ever gone to except mm. LA because it's terrible. Yeah. Um, and I still was trying to convince myself, I'm like, I could live in LA. You know, mm. I could live in LA. It's, you know, it's expensive, you know, but eventually I could, I could live there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I will never live in LA. Yeah. You Sounds like a nightmare. Unless I have millions of dollars, mm. I will never live in LA. Yeah. Unless I live in Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. I'm not living in LA. Yeah. Can't do it. People are too weird, mm-hmm. too spread out. Yeah. Too many people. Yeah. No. No. Not happening. Yeah. So you can enjoy your trip, Tyler. Doesn't look nice. Like the city doesn't look nice. Yeah. People are like it's beautiful. No, it's not. It's ugly looking city. Yeah. yeah. It's an ugly looking city with ugly architecture. Mm-hmm. California architecture. Yeah. It's, it's ugly. The ugly city. Yeah. The stuff to do there. That's why you're there. Yeah. There's shit to do there, and the shit there to do was fun. Mm-hmm. Too many people around it, though. Yeah, yeah. No. Nah. All set on New LA. Yeah. I'm all set. Get to New York. I'm like, I'm figuring out the subway. I spent... Because it's like $5 fee for like the air train, just for the metro. But then to catch the train, mm-hmm. so you catch the air train out to Howard Beach. Mm-hmm. Then I bought a metro card. Okay. $5 fee. That I've just used the air train. Mm-hmm. $2.50 to catch the subway for 90 minutes mm-hmm. to Manhattan. $2.50. That's great. I spent $7.50 mm. to get from the airport to Manhattan. And then yeah. there's train stations every street corner. So I got off on a train. I had to swap on a train at J Street uh, Metro Tech in Brooklyn and then jump on another train right across, literally right across platforms. Two minutes later, jump on straight to the street I my loft was. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Sure, it easy. took maybe half an hour more. Like, instead of yeah. an hour drive into the city, 90 minute train. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in the city, though, for $7.50. Yeah. It's and as soon as so I got better. up in Manhattan, and I just, it was nighttime, and I'm walking through the, um, down a street to my loft in East Village, and, you know, I don't know any of these people. I'm new to the city. I'm Australian. I've never been here before, but I just felt safe. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, I just felt comfortable. Yeah. I was like, I, 
I dig this. Yeah, then yeah. I met up with David because he, he was supposed to stay in the loft with me. We booked it together. He paid mm-hmm. for half, I paid for half. Big loft. Yeah. Awesome. But his his girlfriend lives in New York, so he just stayed with her. Fair enough. Especially because he's touring the world and doesn't see her. He's like, I'm yeah. staying with her. Yeah, cool. But he met up with me like at 11 o'clock at night. We mm-hmm. went and had drinks at a bar. And the bartender like was talking to us, realized we're Australian. And like we ordered two beers and two shots. So the beers, like their tap had emptied out, their keg was empty. So they gave us like the beers that the mm-hmm. last beer. She's like, oh, it's not full. So just have these and we'll give you two more afterwards when we change yeah. I'm like, fuck, free beer. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. We're talking to this Canadian couple next to us, having a good time. Because he plays Danny Zuko mm-hmm. uh, from Greece on a cruise ship. Um, and they got wind of it. The bar started playing Greece music. Yeah. So she gave us two more shots each did the shots with us, the bartender, and then played the music and got him to dance on the bar. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, you saw the video. I saw, I saw, yeah. And yeah. he's just like doing grease lighting on the bar. It's hilarious. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. And then they gave us more free beer. If you did that in Australia, if you jumped on a bar to dance, I don't care who the, what the bartender said, that security's getting you and they're roughing you the fuck up on the way out. Yeah. You're getting beat up. And you're obviously getting kicked out. And the security mm-hmm. guy like came out, this big African-American dude, looked at him and could and I my logic was like this is I'll be him he walks up he goes smooth and then walked away like, <laughs> he's, he's good like fuck respect he's good and then walked away <laughs> he just obviously could tell he's like a good fucking dancer good performer wasn't just a dickhead mm-hmm. you know jumping yeah, at the yeah, table yeah. Um, left him we got free drinks we paid for one beer each That's and we crazy. got heaps of free beer and a bunch of shots I'm like, I fucking love New York. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this place. I And that's when I, that's the moment I go, I could never live in LA. Yeah. Fuck, I could live here though. Mm. And then did like, over the next couple of days, did uh, World Trade Center. Uh, went to <laughs> the did, 9-11. Did well, you know. We, did 9-11. Did 9-11. Just Memorial. Went to the museum. Amazing yeah. experience. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm very emotional. Like, it was incredible to go through that museum. Yeah. Uh, highly recommend if, if, you're, if you're in New York. Um, then went through Brooklyn Bridge did like just the tourist shit we wanted to see the sights and you know street hot dogs New York pizza amazing pizza amazing mm-hmm. hot dog um, and then because um, Dave's girlfriend's a local like she had stuff to do like she's an actress as well so mm-hmm. she would have like auditions and stuff through the day and meetings and you know singing classes and you know yeah, stuff yeah. like that um so we'd meet her at night, but she would recommend places to us. Like for breakfast, we met at this bagel joint that she recommended. Mm-hmm. And so nice. Coffee was solid. Bagels were amazing. I was like, fuck this. And it's okay. just good to get those local recommendations. Went out to dinner with them where they recommended this some ramen place. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just kept seeing the sights. I need to make sure I remember like, that's why I had the notes, Tyler. Yeah. Because you don't want to forget shit. Um, then on that day... <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't obviously read everything, um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, just, I had an amazing time, like, with my mate, just spending some really good quality time. How's Ethan, by the way? Because we're supposed to pick up Ethan. Yeah, I'm good. Hang on, gentlemen. He's called me, and he's, he's on the track. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll respond to Ethan, give me a second. Yeah, no worries. I'll have a look at what... Alright, so he said he's, he's on the train to Northampton now, so it'll be like, 20 minutes, maybe, before he's... How far is the train station? Before he's here. Uh, five, ten minutes, maybe. Okay, so we got ten minutes. I'll speed through the New York because it's not. I don't have as much to rant on in New York. I just it was fucking awesome. Um, and I just had an awesome time hanging out with them. His girl's great, lovely girl. Because the first time I'd met her, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, because no one from back home would have met her because she's American and she's never been to Australia. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to uh, one of the next days um, uh, Dave's girl she took us to this donut place okay I mean donuts aren't a big thing like I mean of course we have donuts in Australia but like mm. I don't really know if we have a donut place there's like a billion types of different donuts like crazy different yeah um, and I'll obviously edit I'm gonna put photos like up through this like to show yeah, donuts cool. but like we for breakfast like we had coffee and just seven big ass donuts or six big ass donuts all these different flavors like creme brulee yeah, okay. this chocolate one this I don't even know I don't even know 
Mm-hmm. One was like peanut butter and jelly. And like, I've never had peanut butter and jelly, like, which is just okay. jam. jam. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I've never actually had peanut butter and jam. It's not like a big thing we do, mm-hmm. but, um, um, that was amazing. <clears throat> I went through a guitar store cause obviously my mate's a musician. He was just playing music for us and stuff. And mm-hmm. we were seeing John Mayer that night. Cause that was the point of the trip, right? Yeah, like yeah. in Madison square garden. Um, and he was playing John Mayer songs on the guitar and a guy's there mm-hmm. and he's like, Oh, you got a concert tonight. And he had a yeah. Kiwi accent. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, we came from Australia to see him. He's like, yeah, I came from Auckland to see uh, okay. the concert. I'm like, fuck. But this is the thing. This is the thing about this concert we went to that night. Yeah. John Mayer, Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden show isn't just the show that the New York fans show up to, mm-hmm. right? This is the show that if anyone's a hardcore John Mayer fan anywhere in the world and they want to see him, mm-hmm. you don't pick the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania show to go to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to New York City, Madison Square Garden. So this was obviously the New York crowd plus the international hardcore fans of John Mayer. Mm. This was like the place to be yeah, so in the world's most famous yeah. arena, the Mecca. Mm-hmm. And it was part of the reason why I wanted to go because it wasn't just seeing John Mayer. I, I, I saw him in March in Brisbane. Yeah. But to see him in Madison Square Garden yeah. in New York City in the world's most famous arena, I've always wanted to do something in Madison Square Garden, whether to see an NBA game, a, a UFC fight or something, but like Madison Square Garden and... It was once in a li- once in a lifetime. Like that concert, I've seen a lot of concerts. I've seen John Mayer, mm-hmm. but that was a special night, and you could tell it was special for John. Mm-hmm. Like he would stop and said things that he's like, that he was having like thoughts throughout that night and that show that was changing him. Yeah, and he was and he was like getting emotional at times and and said things like, you know, because he's one of those artists that's had such a certain journey where he got so famous so fast and then had mm-hmm. his falling from grace and he had a uh, voice vocal injury at the same time so he fell out of the spotlight and didn't make music because he couldn't sing mm-hmm. totally he lost all his fame yeah. like he lost so much of his fame and then he came back and came back with country albums so the mainstream just stopped talking about it mm-hmm. people didn't want to interview him he, had, yeah. he will always have his hardcore fans he sold at Madison Square Garden two nights in a row while I was there he sells that everywhere because yeah. he will always sell that everywhere because he's John Mayer. He has a big enough audience that is his and we'll watch him no matter what. Yeah. Um, but he's been making music and, and for the last couple of years and getting back up there. But he's not going to be mainstream again. He's too old. He's too mm. old news. Like, I, I know that. But he said things like, he's like, you, the, you know, realizing that he's like, I don't need to be big and famous. I just need to do this for you guys. And it's only recently that I've realized this. And one of the songs... Emoji of a Wave, one of his newer songs that isn't was never big, mm-hmm. never a single or anything, and everyone was just blaring it out. Mm-hmm. And he said afterwards, he goes like, "I was worried about playing that song because it wasn't successful, and people always tell you people will tell you if it's successful if they like it. Like you know, a song's good because it'll be successful." Mm-hmm. He's like, "There's nothing successful about that song, but all you guys singing it." For the first time in my life, I realized yeah. I don't have to worry about that song anymore. You get you. Either, I did have a reason to write that song, and I've never thought that in my life. But mm. about any song, yeah, that's but great. you guys just made me feel like that. And he mm. stopped a couple times throughout the night when he wasn't clearly like he didn't plan to talk because he's not much of like a talker between songs. It's a very mm. set like show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He but every the thing about John Mayer is you could see him three nights in a row and he'll never play the same set. Every yeah. night is a completely different set list of songs. Because mm-hmm. the second night of Madison Square Garden, he played a different first act, came back and played the Continuum album in its entirety, which would have been cool to see. But I'm glad I didn't because he played like some big songs I wanted to hear. Yeah, but yeah. it was, it really was once a lifetime. And Dave, who's John May's his favorite artist as well, he'd never seen him before. So he was just like, as a musician and a young artist like him, it changed his like He's like, I'm buying an electric guitar tomorrow because he's. He's like, he knew he was going to buy one eventually, but he's just like, I'm fine with acoustic and writing songs on acoustic. But he's yeah. like, no, I want to, you know, getting motivated. Yeah. It was an incredible experience. Like, yeah, that sounds was, great. That was, yeah. It was special. Yeah. And it was special as yeah. a John Mayer, like, super fan to be in the room and mm-hmm. that crowd in there. Like, in Australia, like, when you're in the seating seats, you might stand up for, like, the big finale. Mm-hmm. And obviously, standing ovation sort of thing. But there, as soon as the first song came on, everyone in the arena was sitting up and didn't sit down until the show was over. Mm. dancing getting into it it was crazy that crowd yeah. was so into it and I wasn't sure if it was because they're Americans and that's what American crowds are like I mean they are like that which is great yeah I love that or if it was just like it's that yeah, fan yeah. base the New York yeah. fan base probably a bit um, of both yeah yeah true but 
ate a lot of burgers in America too mm-hmm. as well um, Shake Shack fucking incredible what's that Shake Shack yeah, you have it in it? the UK do we in London you have, yeah you have Shake Shack here oh, I don't know what it is what is it's it it's a burger joint that also does oh, shakes I didn't know that incredible I okay. had yeah they're one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life just their base they like mm-hmm. cheeseburger there fucking incredible Okay, cool. The shakes were good. The fries were good. Shits all over In and Out. Yeah, I'd heard so much about In and Out. I was so hyped for In and Out. I'm like, I'll try a shake shake, but In and Out's what I want. Yeah. In and Out can, like I've said several times this podcast, <laughs> and LA can suck my Australian nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Just suck them. So um, cool, good stuff. Yeah, no um, Shake Shack was the shit. Found this burger uh-huh. joint that Jared recommended to me, that was in a hotel lobby, mm-hmm. just off Times Square behind a curtain down a hall okay random so you so we walked in this um busy-ish street not super busy lots of construction going on mm-hmm. and there's a hotel lobby you go in the hotel lobby fancy hotel does not gl- not look like we belong mm-hmm. and then we're walking around we couldn't see and then i googled it again i was like i'm trying to find this because we had the location but we couldn't find where, the, where it was there's this massive red wall curtain mm-hmm. and then we open up the curtain and there's a dark unlit hallway with okay. a lit up burger sign at the end of it what and we go down the hallway of this lobby yeah and then inside and then you turn the corner into this burger joint blues music packed burger joint what the fuck what the fuck how do people even know about it I don't know that's it's so it's become strange. famous for being secret because this burger joint is the place it's good <sighs> whoa how does it how does it compare to other places thick so much in it Mm-hmm. just a thick patty perfectly cooked mm-hmm. cheese amazing sauce amazing lettuce tomato onion bacon oh incre- I'll show you a picture okay. I'll put a picture up to, um, for people to see on the podcast but, okay. I'll, but I'll get you a picture up so you can see specifically um, what it looked like that's what it looked like oh yeah pickles onion cheese double beef Double bacon. That is absolutely crazy. Huge. Huge place. I'll show you the video. So this is... I'll play the video, like, on the podcast. Okay. But that's, like, us walking down the... Oh, yeah. That's it. And then you walk in. (laughs) What the fuck? Yeah. Just this little burger joint. That's so weird. Just this little burger joint. That's really cool. Yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy. So... That was the day we saw John Mayer was when we went there. But yeah. yeah, and then we did Shake Shack the next day in Central Park and stuff. So dense. Den- Central Park's massive mm-hmm. and dense. Like, it's yeah, not yeah. just like grass yeah, area and trees and lakes. Like, mm. it's like foresty areas you walk through. A bit of like a, like a, feels feels like a bit of a bush walk through it. It was, it was really nice. Lovely. Yeah. Nice change. But I saw a squirrel Whoa. for the first time in my life. That was yeah, cool. You don't have squirrels? No. No. Whoa. We don't have squirrels in Australia. Squirrels are so normal. Nah, not at all. Never seen a squirrel in my life until then. I was like, cra- was that's cra- crazy. Big experience. That is insane. See a squirrel? No, no. We have like kangaroos and shit. We don't have squirrels. Um, yeah. Then yeah, one morning went to Australian cafe, got Australian coffee, Vegemite mm-hmm. on toast. That was good. Mm-hmm. Good. Lots of Australians there. That was nice. Um, normal people. Yeah, good. Um, got Dave's girl to try Vegemite first time. She did not like it. Fair play to her. Uh, but yeah, you know, I saw the signs. Times Square, which mm-hmm. sucked. Just too many people yeah. too many people again that's where everyone was it's like oh this is where everyone is mm. but New York was one of the most beautiful cities I've ever yeah. been to I like New York exactly really my nice. pace exactly mm-hmm. my pace exactly my style people were so awesome yeah people were great um, I'm just like and even the people who weren't great I'm like they're just like the, I get it like, they mm-hmm. weren't crazy to me like I understood yeah. it even though assholes, I'm like, yeah, no, but you're a normal asshole. Yeah. They didn't seem weird. Like California, LA people, like I was like, you're weird. I don't, you're a different species of human. Mm. So in New York, I'm like, oh no, this is just normal people. Yeah. Um, nice people, asshole people, but like normal people. And I love the city. Felt so at home there. The whole time I was there, I just felt so at home there. Yeah. Magical place. I want to move there. Yeah. I want to move you there. Said. I want to move to New York so bad. It was amazing. So, mm-hmm. LA was good at the time I was in LA, and then once I got to New York, I was like, LA can kick fucking rocks. Yeah. Shithole. Just a shithole. Fuck LA. Uh, and New York, 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Beautiful city. Felt like I did perfect balance between I did the tourist stuff, 
mm-hmm. saw the sights I wanted to see, um, and also got to do what the locals do and spend some time just walking around, ate at great places, food was amazing, you know, and just nice places to drink at, went to lots of bars at night, bar hopping, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. And it's it's so lively. All to, like Then again, it was like 2 a.m. on Thursday and lots of the bars in, in the Lower East Side and East Village were, clo- were closing. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought this was the city that never sleeps. But I guess it just depends where you, yeah. where you go in the city. I'm sure there's yeah. places that are always open. But mm-hmm. yeah, amazing city, amazing place. I want to live there. But yeah, yeah that's, um, that's my trip to America. Good shit. Yeah, man. I loved it. Amazing. Yeah. But LA needs to figure that shit out. Not good. That, no place, good. that place needs to be like, burnt down or something yeah, it has to be like if you could euthanize a city mm-hmm. probably that or like start again you know if you could just start again probably best for that that's probably, probably the place idea, that yeah. needs to start again but yeah thanks um everybody for watching this video um thank you very much I hope you enjoyed i will obviously put like photos videos and everything good stuff of what i've talked about throughout good, good, good. Um, so you can see um when an hour, a little bit longer than I expected. My apologies. Um, we're going to go pick up Ethan. We're going to do and just the four now. pillars are going to unite for the first time. Insane. Um, even Crazy though you're seeing this stuff. way after any of the four yeah. pillars come to the None of this is relevant to yeah, you, but yeah, that's fine. But that's what's happening when we're recording this. All mm-hmm. right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. James, thanks for sitting here with me um, and right, listening man. to me talk about uh, myself. Uh, for an hour, <laughs> you're used to it. Um, yeah, it's all good. And we will see you very soon with more fucking podcasting content. Nice. See you later. Goodbye.